Hello students, in this session we will discuss strain energy. So first of all we will discuss basic terminology of topic strain energy. That are elastic strain energy, resilience, proof resilience and modulus of resilience. After that we will discuss strain energy due to gradual loading and sudden loading. And after that we will solve few numericals. So, let's start with the basic terminology of topic strain energy. So, we will start with elastic strain energy. Now, what is elastic strain energy? Here is the definition of elastic strain energy. So, first read this definition. Internal energy which is stored in any material which is loaded within elastic limit is called elastic strain energy. So, in a simple word, we can say that when a body is subjected to gradual, sudden or impact type of the loading, it deforms and work is done upon it. If elastic limit is not exceeded, this work is stored in the body. This work done or stored in the body is called elastic strain energy. So, we can say that strain energy is equal to what? work done or stored in the body. Now what is resilience? Total strain energy stored in a body is called resilience. Resilience is denoted by mu and equation to calculate resilience is sigma square upon 2e into v where sigma is stress and v is volume. Unit of resilience is newton into mm or newton into meter. Now, what is proof resilience? So, maximum strain energy which can be stored in a body at elastic limit is called proof resilience. Proof resilience is denoted by mu p. An equation to calculate proof resilience is sigma e square upon 2e into v, where sigma e is stress at elastic limit. Now, what is modulus of resilience? So, maximum strain energy which can be stored in a body per unit volume at elastic limit is called modulus of resilience. In other words, we can say that proof resilience per unit volume is called modulus of resilience. Modulus of resilience is denoted by mu m. An equation to calculate modulus of resilience is sigma e square upon 2e. Unit of modulus of resilience is newton into mm per mm cube or newton into meter per meter cube. Okay. So, now let's move to our next topic and here we will discuss strain energy due to gradual loading. So, let's consider a bar of length L and uniform sectional area capital A which is subjected to gradual type of the load which is capital P. Okay. Now, here is the load versus deformation diagram. If I plot load P versus deformation delta L, then I can say that as load P is increasing, deformation delta L will also increase. So, here is the load versus deformation diagram and from the diagram we can say that work done on the bar is equal to area of load versus deformation diagram. So, here the diagram is triangle in a shape and area of triangle is one half into base into height. So, we can say that it will be one half into delta L which is base of the triangle and P which is height of the triangle. So, we can say that work done on the bar is equal to one half into delta L into P. Say it is equation number one. Now, here is the resistance versus deformation diagram. So, we can say that as deformation increases, resistance will also increase. So, from the diagram, we can say that work stored in the bar is equal to area of resistance versus deformation diagram. Here, again the diagram is triangle in a shape and area of this triangle is 
one half delta L into R, where delta L is base of the triangle and capital R is height of the triangle. Now we know that stress sigma is equal to resistance upon A, means area. Therefore, we can say that resistance is equal to sigma into area. So I am replacing capital R with sigma into A here. So I can say that work stored in the bar is equal to 1 half into delta L into sigma into A. So here we can say that this is the equation number 2. Now we know that work done is equal to work stored. So from equation 1 and 2 we can say that 1 half P into delta L is equal to 1 half into sigma into A into delta L. Therefore, I can say that P is equal to sigma A and sigma is equal to P by A. So, here is the equation of stress that we can use to calculate stress in case of applied load is gradual. Okay. Now, let's discuss strain energy due to sudden loading. So, when load is applied suddenly, the value of the load P throughout the deformation will be same, okay, or uniform, okay. Now, here is the load versus deformation diagram. So, here load is applied suddenly, therefore, this is the load versus deformation diagram. And from the diagram, we can say that work done on the bar is equal to area of this diagram. Area of this diagram will be uh, B into D. So, I can say that B is delta L and D is P. So, the work done on the bar is equal to P into delta L. Say, this is equation number 1. Now, here is the resistance versus deformation diagram. As we discussed earlier, as deformation increases, resistance also increases. So, uh, from the diagram, we can say that work stored in the bar is equal to 1 half sigma into A into T. Say this is equation number 2. Now, again, we know that work done is equal to work stored. And from equation number 1 and 2, we can say that P into delta L is equal to 1 half into sigma into A into T. So, I can say that P is equal to 1 half into sigma into A. Therefore, sigma is equal to 2P by A. This is the equation to calculate stress when the load is applied suddenly. Okay. So, we can say that the maximum stress intensity due to sudden applied load is twice than the stress intensity produced by the load of the same magnitude applied gradually. Okay, now let's solve few numerical. So here, an axial pull of 50 kilonewton is suddenly applied to a steel bar of 2 meter long and 1000 mm square in cross section. Here, load P is given 50 kilonewton, which is equal to 15 to 10 raised to 3 newton. Here, applied load is sudden. Now, length of the bar is 2 meters, so it is 2000 mm. And cross section area is 1000 mm square. So, A is equal to 1000 mm square. Value of ES, which is Young's modulus of elasticity, is equal to 200 kilonewton per mm square. I am converting it into newton into Newton per mm square. So, I am getting E is equal to 200 into 10 raised to 3 Newton per mm square. Now, we need to calculate maximum instantaneous stress, maximum instantaneous elongation, strain energy and modulus of resilience. So, let's start with maximum instantaneous stress. So, we know that for the certain type of the loading, sigma is equal to 2P upon A where value of P which is given 15 to 10 raised to 3 and area is also given it is 1000. So, I am getting stress sigma is equal to 100 Newton per mm square. Now, let us calculate maximum instantaneous elongation. We know that stress is proportional to strain. So, we can say that stress is equal to E into strain. That, therefore, we can say that E is equal to sigma upon Epsilon. 
Therefore, epsilon strain is equal to sigma upon E. Value of sigma as we calculated 100 Newton per mm square and value of E which is given 200 into 10 raised to 3. So, I am getting strain epsilon is equal to 5 into 10 raised to minus 4. Now, we know that strain is equal to delta L by L. So, we can say that delta L is equal to strain into length. Strain as we calculated 5 into 10 raised to minus 4 and length is equal to 2000. So, I am getting delta L which is maximum instantaneous elongation is equal to 1 mm. Okay. Now, let's calculate strain energy. Here is the equation to calculate strain energy mu which is equal to sigma square upon 2e into v. Now, sigma we calculated 100 square upon 2 into value of e is 200 into 10 raised to 3 and volume is equal to 1000 which is cross section into 2000 which is length. Therefore, I am getting mu is equal to 5000 newton into mm. So, I am converting it into newton into meter. So, it will be 50 newton into meter. Now, let's calculate modulus of resilience mu m. Mu m is equal to sigma square upon 2e. Sigma square is 100 square upon 2 into 200 into 10 raised to 3 which is e. So, I am getting mu m is equal to 0 0.025 newton into mm per mm cube. So, let's calculate one more numerical. Here, a steel rod is 3 meter long and 40 mm in diameter. So, length of the road which is given 3 meter and, and I am converting it into mm. So, it is 3000 mm. Now, diameter of the rod is 40 mm. So, area of the rod is pi by 4 d square which is equal to pi by 4 40 square. I am getting area of this rod is equal to 1256.63 mm square. An axial pull of 160 kilo newton is suddenly applied. So, here P is equal to 160 kilo newton. I am converting it into newton. So, it will be 160 into 10 raised to 3. The applied load is 7. Okay. Value of E is again 200 kilo newton per mm square which is equal to 200 into 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square. Now, here we need to calculate maximum instantaneous stress and maximum instantaneous elongation. So, let's first calculate maximum instantaneous stress. So, we know that for the sudden loading, sigma is equal to 2p by a. Value of p which is given 160 into 10 raised to 3 and value of a which we calculated it is 1256.63. So, I am getting sigma is equal to 254.65 newton per mm square. Now, maximum instantaneous elongation. So, for calculation of maximum instantaneous elongation, equation to calculate Young's modulus of elasticity capital E is equal to sigma by epsilon where sigma is stress and epsilon is strain. Therefore, I can say that epsilon is equal to sigma by E. Value of sigma as we calculated it is 254.65 and value of E is 200 into 10 raised to 3 which is given. So, I am getting epsilon strain is equal to 1.27 into 10 raised to minus 3. Now, we know that epsilon is equal to delta L by L. So, delta L is equal to epsilon into L. Value of epsilon as we calculated 1.27 into 10 raised to minus 3 and value of length is equal to 3000. So, I am getting delta L is equal to 3.819 mm. Now, let's solve a no numerical. Here, a steel bar 100 centimeter long and rectangular in section 40 mm by 80 mm is subjected to an actual load of 1 kilo newton. So, length of the bar is given which is 100 centimeter. It is equal to 1000 mm. Rectangular cross section 40 mm by 80 mm. That's why area is equal to 40 by 80 which is 3200 mm square. 
Now axial load is 1 kilo Newton which is equal to 1000 Newton. We need to find maximum stress in two conditions. First the load is applied gradually and other when the load is applied suddenly. We also need to calculate strain energy in each cases when E is equal to 200 gigapascal. So I am converting gigapascal into Newton per mm square which is equal to 200 into 10 raised to 3 Newton per mm square. Now let's start with case number 1. In case number 1 we will calculate stress and strain energy when load is applied gradually. So we know that when the load is applied gradually, sigma is equal to P by A. Value of P which is given 1000 and area is 3200. So I am getting sigma is equal to 0.3125 Newton per mm square. Now strain energy is equal to sigma square upon 2E into V. Sigma is 0.3125 square of sigma is 0.3125 square upon 2 into value of E is 200 into 10 raised to 3. Now volume is 3200 which is area into length which is 1000. So I am getting volume is equal to 32 into 10 raised to 5. So I am getting mu is equal to 0.781 Newton into mm. Okay. Now let's move to case number 2. In this case we will calculate sigma and strain energy when load is applied suddenly. And here is the equation to calculate stress. When load is applied suddenly then stress is equal to 2P by A. P is equal to 1000 and A is 3200. So I am getting value of stress is equal to 0.625 Newton per mm square. Now Mu is equal to sigma square upon 2E into V where sigma is 0 0.625, E is 200 into 10 raised to 3 and volume is 32 into 10 raised to 5. So I am getting strain energy is equal to 3.125 Newton into mm. So this is end of this session. In next session, we will calculate strain energy due to impact type of the loading and we will also solve few numericals. Thank you.